All right, this is just a quick video to take you through the spreadsheet for delay sensitivity. Um, I will put the link to download the, um, the spreadsheet and the PDF manual down below. Um, once you open the spreadsheet, uh, you will see that this um, contains um, five worksheets. The first one is called Guide. This is just um, uh, this. This spreadsheet contains the um, color codes and the table of content of the model. So as you can see in the color codes, everywhere in the model is basically just in the input sheet. If you see the cell that the background is light yellow and the font is blue, this cell you can modify it. You can change it um, because it's a hard coded assumption. Uh, so let's get into the input sheet. The input sheet is um, contains all the hard-coded assumptions in the model, which are categorized by type. So the first uh, assumption is the model currency. So if you want to change the model currency, you come to this cell. And for example, if you want to project everything in dollars, in euros, you're just going to put the symbol or just type down euros or um, so to modify it. Then the next thing you need to do is to define the timing assumption for your project. Um, and uh, so first of all, the development start date. So that's basically the model start date as well. Then the next thing is to define the construction program, whether your program is going to last 12 months, 24 months, you define it here. And this is the parameter that we used for running sensitivities, three months, six months, you can apply any number of uh, delays uh, that you want by changing this assumption and the last one is the number of uh, projections that you want for example 20 years 10 years five years you want to project um, looking forward um, these uh, two assumptions are basically the model periodicity first one is for the pre-operational period so for example if you put this to one meaning it means that you want to project your sources and uses of funds on a monthly basis and this is for the operation because in this model it's just limited to basically sources and uses um, so you might not need that that much, but it also, but yeah, but it's used for the principal repayment of debt. So you can change it to quarterly, semi-annually, or annual basis. The next set of assumptions that you need to define in this model are the capital expenditure. So remember that this is just like if it is without delay. Um, without delay, this is the scheduled program. So for example, uh, you say that um, these are the cost items that you need to pay throughout the construction. You have the possibility to define 10 cost items. And as you can see, even the labels are color coded as input. So you can even change the labels. So for example, if you have um, only two cost items, you're just gonna put this one to spare and put the amounts to zero and define the labels for the cost items that you want. And then the next thing that you need to define is the lump sum amount that you need to pay during the construction. For example, here I'm saying that I need to pay $150 million of civil work throughout these 12 years of, of construction. So you define this the lump sum amount. And the next thing you need to define in the model is how you're going to pay this contractor, how you're going to pay for this cost. Are you going to pay it equally throughout the construction? Or are you going to pay, are you going to have a down payment and then uh, repay the rest? Or are you going to pay everything at the financial close? So you can modify and change all these assumptions here uh, based on the, the, your project. Uh, the next set of assumptions, which are di directly related to, um, which are directly related to the construction program, sorry, the delay program, uh, the delay, are the basically the cost overrun. So if um, if you have a delay in um, construction, then um, uh, of course you will have to um, assume that there will be some cost overrun associated with this delay, right? Because, uh, for example, if you were um, assuming that you're going to close the project in two months but then uh, something happens and you have another four months to go during that four months you have to pay some contractors you have to pay some SPV costs some um, employees that you have on the project so you have to maybe pay um, some owner engineering 
uh, some advisors that you need to pay. So everything you might have uh, to include this cost overruns in the model. So that's where you define them, but it should be the same. So you see, so for the same 10 cost items that you have defined, you define that if in case of delay, how much extra costs you need to pay per day. So these are defined per day. The next set of assumptions are the liquidated damages. So when you have delays, uh, sometimes, you know, in the contracts that you have with your construction contractor, if uh, the delay is due to the failure of the EPC contractor, the construction uh, contractor, then you might be uh, eligible to get some compensation from the EPC contractor. And these are defined in the contracts. So you say that, for example, per day of um, delay, uh, you are you are supposed to pay this amount of um, this much, you know, compensation. On the other hand, you must you might also have to pay some kind of penalties if you are not able to deliver on time. So you can also define it here in the second uh, item. You define what you, what are your um, the penalties that the project needs to pay to any party. Uh, and the last one that I define here is the insurance. Sometimes you have some insurance provisions that in case of delays, you can tap into the insurance and um, get some money, you know, from the insurance provider. Um, that's usually for cases where you have the physical damage on the equipment. But in any case, um, if you have such an option and it relates to the delay that you are applying to the model, you can activate this one as well by simply entering the amount of insurance uh, and of an amount of money that you can get from your insurance provider. Um, the next set of assumptions that you need to find are related to the debt. If you're financing uh, a per portion of the construction cost with the debt, then you want to define the amount of um, debt that is available to you and the terms of that debt here. And I have also included some sensitivity parameters, which I will show you in the dashboard uh, when we go to the dashboard in a few seconds. Uh, once you have defined these assumptions, then the model will calculate all the sources and uses and the delays uh, in the timing and the financing sheet. But as a user, you should mainly define your assumptions in the input sheet and then go to the dashboard and look at the results and um, do some sensitivities directly in the dashboard. For example, here, if I set the, you see, I can use this switch to change the delay um, assumption. So here is the business as usual. There are no delays. If there are no delays um, in this project, uh, um, the total project cost is $413 million, which will be funded by debt and equity, 350 million debt and 63 million of equity. So now let's say that if what if what happens if I have one month delay? OK, so if you have one month delay, you will see that based on the cost overrun that you have defined in the input sheet, this will cause you 39 million of um, cost overrun. Uh, just let me mention this one that uh, aside from the cost overrun that you have defined in the model, the model will also calculate the amount of financing costs that you need to pay. You have to pay some interest during construction during those delay periods. So that will also be um, calculated here. For example, here it's two million. OK, um, so yeah, so you have this 39 million of um, cost overrun for one month of um, delay in construction. Then here you will see that uh, based on the assumption, 35 million will come from liquidated damages because in this one you say that it's the uh, EPC fault. So EPC needs to pay the project 35 million. You also had an insurance of 2 million that will also be added here. And 1 million will be paid by debt. 1 million will be paid by equity. So let's say that you want to see the situation where the lenders will not agree to fund any cost overrun for the delay. So you come here in the dashboard, as you can see, you change this parameter to zero and you will see that if the lenders will not, um, um, if the lenders will not uh, change, it will not fund any of the cost overruns, everything will be on equity. So equity needs to pay 3 million of, um, of, um, additional equity needs to be in injected to fund this short shortfall during delay. Uh, 
So let's say that you are in the phase where you are still negotiating your um, construction, um, your um, contract with the construction contractor, your EPC contract. Let's say you're at that stage and you want to say that, okay, for every month of delay that I have, I want to make sure that these liquidated damages that I put in my contract are sufficient enough to cover for any delays for any cost overrun. So what you can do here, I, I created some switches here for changing the delay, the liquidated damages amount that you have defined. So this is the, um, um, this is the liquidated damages you receive from the contractor. So let's say that for now it is, this is an increase. So from the base cases amounts that I have defined, by how much do I need to increase my liquidated damages so that as equity, I don't put anything. So let's see, for example, in this case, I need to, as you can see, I'm increasing the liquidated damages and I see that I need to increase them by 8% from what I have assumed in my base case so that I don't pay anything as equity. Everything is covered by insurance and liquidated damages. So you're able to test all these, you know, but let's say that what if, you know, you have more cost overrun, what's going to happen? So you can test all these by using the switches and look at looking at the graphs and charts and the table to estimate the amount of damage or the amount of funds that you need to uh, finance in case of delay in construction. Of course, you need to integrate this mechanism into your own financial model to see the impact on the ratios and return. But that is just giving you a base on how to do this analysis and how to integrate it into your own financial model. I hope you find this helpful. And if you like this type of material, subscribe to my channel and I will upload more materials um, going forward. Thank you.